Hey guys, welcome in to the Bro for Squad podcast. This is episode 102, the first annual Broskers a third time. I am your host, the Mayor Jeff Hornacek. Joining me is the mad scientist Brian Banner and backstage our enforcer in the paint, Matt Geiger. Banner, before we toss it to Matt Geiger on the red carpet for all the fashion insights, this is the first annual third one of these. How do you feel tonight? I mean, a lot of awards about to go to a lot of movies, a lot of actors and actresses. This is a big fucking deal in Hollywood, right? Really big deal. Like, it's, it is an accomplishment to get one of these hung on your wall. And they're they- hanging awards, obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah, anybody can give out a goddamn trophy, but yeah, not every. What are they like? Picture frames? Yeah, you know, just stuff to hang on the wall. Got it. Well, hey, let's uh, not wait. The people at home wait any longer. Let's toss it down to Matt Geiger, who is live on the scene on the red carpet. Matt, what's what's the scuttlebutt down there? What's the fashion look like? What's the hot topic of the night? Jeff Bryan, do you read me loud and clear? Yeah, we got, we yeah. got you. Yeah, you're, awesome. you're here. I am down here with a ton of TNA and a couple dudes, if you care about that kind of thing. I'm live from the red carpet, and let me tell you, this year, people are pumping their charities more than ever. We have Charlie Sheen's AIDS Fund, not for for a cure or anything, but just to buy more hookers that don't mind the disease. We also have Easy es AIDS Fund for uh, police brutality victims. And last but not least, Magic Johnson's AIDS Fund to help pilots fly through fog back to you guys jesus christ God damn it. <laughs> all right well <clears throat> similar to the oscars the past two years because we love digging up people's decade-old semi-sexist and racist tweets we also do not have a host here tonight isn't that right brian yeah but don't worry man i got you i prepared a really really shitty monologue that i can go right now before you know these six awards i'll just go ahead and um you know, start start that monologue. It's, yeah, l- listen, you tried the same no, thing at my third wedding, and it wasn't any more appropriate then than it is now. Okay? I, I don't know, man. I'm pretty sure there's a law somewhere saying that if you're past your second wedding, anybody who shows up kind of gets to do whatever the fuck they want for any wedding after that. That's fair. And congratulations, Banner. You've hurt me. Yeah, well, while Jeff tries up his first set of tears of the night let's send it down to the stage for our first award of the night here to present the what's up doc award for the best documentary film of the year liam neeson welcome to the first annual broskers a third time everyone i'm taking time tonight away from my wife and daughter who will most likely be abducted in some way shape or form in the next hour forcing me to reluctantly use combat skills that I've sworn never to use again. In the meantime, let's hear the nominees for the What's Up Doc Award. And they are... Fry. I love you. Now die. The Inventor. Out for blood in Silicon Valley. Confessions of a Killer. The Ted Bundy Tapes. What's my name? And the winner is... I love you. Now die. Wow. Wow. I think uh, the movie Fry is either one I haven't heard of or that robot mispronounced fire. I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, her voice kind of sounded like it cracked also on What's My Name. Funny thing, I love you now die. That's actually uh, my ex-wife Rachel's wedding vow to me. That's all she said. At least she said I love you, though. So that's, yeah, this was a this was kind of like your autobiography, wasn't it? Very much so. Hey, Matt, let's uh, let's toss it down to you. First award of the night, first year we've had a documentary award given out. Uh, what's the vibe down there? Stop! 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 Whoa! Sorry, guys, off the red carpet. Now I'm backstage, and there is even more vendors than we had last year with a bunch of awesome prizes like this booth. I'm right here with Liam Neeson's daughter from Taken and his son from Cold Pursuit, who actually wasn't dead the whole time, standing right here with me. And we just want a free vacation to this beautiful island where Captain Epstein's going to fly us out after the show. He said we're just young enough to get on the plane, whatever that means. It's pretty fucking lucky. So pack your Hawaiian shirt, guys, because he said he has room for two more young guys that look just like me. 
wouldn't get on that plane. Yeah, I got a thing. Sorry. Probably worse than Spirit <laughs> Airlines. <laughs> I got to tell you guys at home, this is the part of the show where I decide if I'm going to stick with liquor, or if I'm going to go to the beer the rest of the night. It's kind of that up in the air time. But you're actually drinking rosé, though. And you'll be drinking out of a fucking straw if you don't check yourself. <laughs> Look at us feuding. We're like Tyrese and The Rock. Except unlike those two, both of us have no talent and not just one of us. That is a great segue, Jeff. Our next award is the Tyrese Gibson Award presented to the actor or actress who must be in desperate, desperate need of money based on the roles that they've taken this year. Let's head down to the stage where we have Matthew McConaughey as, wow, he's already shirtless. Man, he's a hero of mine. With the Dallas Cowboys legend, Michael Irving. Hey, everybody. Glad to be back at the Broscars for a third year in a row, man. Listen, I know Tyrese Gibson personally, and I think it's kind of fucked up that you named this award after him, but it is goddamn hilarious. It's fucked up, but I respect it, though. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Matthew. You look, my, you look like my boy, Troy. My boy, 8-Ball, who we won three, count them, three Super Bowls with, with the Cowboys back in the 90s. Ha, ha, ha. So let's see which one of these movies are going to get up, stand up, and, 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 and the nominees are Bruce Willis, Glass, Vanessa Hudgens, Polar, everybody who is in Serenity, Jennifer Lawrence, Dark Phoenix, but also everyone else, like the Fox Studios, anyone involved in Hobbs and Shaw. And the winner is, let me open up this envelope real quick. Sorry, I'm a little bit sweaty. So my fingers are, oh, it's Jennifer Lawrence for Dark Phoenix and like everybody else at Fox Studios. All right, all right, all right. Oh, boy, Banner. Um, quite the, the duo down there. Matthew McConaughey and Michael Irvin. What the fuck is our budget here that we were even able to get those two guys? Uh, yeah, we're, we're overspending. Not going to lie to you, but I mean, worth it. Totally. It's- Cycling manages the invoices, so I think we're good. In that yeah, department. not not my problem. Uh, oh. We surprised, man. This was, uh, I mean, Jennifer Lawrence. Is yeah. everything okay at home? Probably not. I can imagine that her getting to do this movie, man, her two stipulations were, I'm not putting on the fucking blue makeup and just kill me in like the first 10 minutes. Women, women get what they want when they're hot, am I right? Yeah, that's what they tell me. All right, well, the show's in full swing. Uh, Geiger, what's going on backstage now that we've got our second award handed out? Thanks for asking, Jeff. A lot. Rumors are fucking flying. I'm with directors. I'm with actors. Talking about reboots, talking about movies that are already greenlit. Since Bohemian Rhapsody and Rocket Man made so much money at the box office, they're going to do an Eminem movie. And we already got the star playing the real Slim Shady, Kristen Stewart. So now we know why she got that haircut, apparently. So the real Slim Shady has stood up. Back to you guys. Wow, is that one of the first scoops we've ever broken on the Broforce squad? We're moving up in the world, guys. Hell yeah. Well, hey, glad Geiger's having fun down there. Looks like for a third year in a row, he's well on track to get us not allowed into our own after party. Uh, Jeff, I'm not really sure how to put this, but all of us have gotten into the after party every year, just not you. Well, no, Biggie. I'm sure it's not that much of a fun time anyway. Uh, Ashley Simpson performed last year's party. God damn it. All right. Well, let's uh, let's just go ahead and head down to the stage uh, while you compose yourself, uh, where we're graced with the presence of Master Yoda, who is wow. here tonight to present the award for the nerdy chick in high school who got hot, which goes to the movie that surprised us the most this year. No idea what this award show is I have, but sent here by my agent I was. Child support payments for over 2,000 children I have to pay. Here are the nominations for the nerdy chick in high school who got hot award. Alita Battle Angel. Murder Mystery, 
Midsummer. The Farewell. Aladdin. Yesterday. And the winner is... Mystery Murder. Jeez. I mean, who would have thought that Yoda, Adam Sandler, and Jennifer Aniston would all have this connection for the rest of their lives, Brian? What a tremendous night the Broskers are. Who would have thought Adam Sandler would win another fucking award? It's, pretty it's a big crazy. deal. It is a big deal. It's 2020, uh, guys. You and I gotta confess, we thoroughly love this movie, and I'm not a big Adam Sandler guy. So I think it makes perfect sense that it won. It's almost like we're in charge of who gets these awards, which is crazy. Yeah, we're not, obviously. It's a very prestigious uh, organization, group, really, club. Almost a cult. Absolutely. And to verify that, let's let's go to Geiger backstage. Geiger, uh, third award of the night. What's What are things looking like with all the celebrities? I'm actually... Uh... Not really sitting next to, but on my lap right now is Baby Yoda, and we're um, we're sharing a bowl of blow actually, or as he calls it, Tatooine snow, which is kind of weird. I didn't even know it fucking snowed on Tatooine, but apparently that's what he calls cocaine in his native language. But there's a ton of drugs back here, guys. Even more than appetizers. I haven't seen a cheese plate pass by for a while, but I can get a doobie. You want me to get you guys anything? Uh, if you see some Gouda or like a. Nice set of crackers. Grab some of that. Yeah, some Havarti, maybe. It's a party. Okay. We've got enough drugs up here, is what I'm saying. We need some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back to you wow. guys. <laughs> wow, what a treat to have uh, Yoda himself and Baby Yoda here at the Broskers tonight. Oh, yeah, and he looks great. Both of them. and Neither one of them looks a day over a thousand years old. You know, I heard he actually went vegan. That must be why his skin looks so good. I mean... <laughs> Sounds like a dietary change has made this world a big difference for him, Horns. If that's your way of trying to get me to give you the last two Chick-fil-A nuggets that I have, you can fuck right off. Hey, I mean, you can't fault a guy for trying, right? Our next award is the Can I Speak to Your Manager Award for the movie that we saw this year that sucked, but we really want our money back. Let's send it down to Sam Elliott and Bain to present. Hello. I'm Sam Elliott, and before we get to the award, I just want to say that God damn it, do I respect the mane of lush hair that Brian Bader is growing. I mean, he's like the son I never had. Oh, Sam, you have a son, a child of the light, who has seen the darkness, hasn't he? If you're referring to the fact that he's in a My Chemical Romance cover band, then yes, Bane, he has. Oh, such a shame for you. Here are the nominees for the Can I Speak to Your Supervisor Award. Serenity. <clears throat> the Highwayman. Man in Black International. Lion King. Shazam! Exclamation point. And the winner is... Catwoman's movie, Serenity. Wow. The people love it. You got to love Hollywood looking out for their own. Bane is still remembering uh, Anne Hathaway and her turn as Catwoman. Um, Banner, I guess we won't spoil it here, but Serenity may be one of the worst twists in movie history. I mean, it had to win this award, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to win for the next decade. I mean, this this movie is the start of a dynasty, in my opinion. It'll win the Lifetime Achievement Award for shitty twists. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of shitty, uh, Matt, what are things looking like backstage now? We're about halfway through the show. Are things headed downhill fast? So back here again, um, <laughs> this isn't really the Pepsi Challenge. It's maybe the Pepsi Challenge of 2020, but it's called the Woke Booth. And basically, I have a machine over my eyes right now, kind of like a clockwork orange. I can't blink. And I got to watch Charlie's Angels start to finish without blinking. And at the end, if I think it's not sexy enough, then Elizabeth Banks is just going to talk shit on me on Twitter the whole time. So I either get woke or get fucking bitched at on Twitter by Elizabeth Banks by being just a male, I guess. So I'm struck to the machine right now, and they're about to press play, and I'm about to watch uh, this movie with it looks like 
a chick with the haircut I had in fourth grade and Jasmine from Aladdin. So wish me luck, guys. Nice. Yeah, I mean, you either like it or you're sexist. So, yeah, I mean, there's really no other option. Yeah. All right. Well, we're down to the last two awards of the night, Banner. Yep, we sure are. Um, you want to start looking for Uber's home or you want you want to split them like you want to split it or? No, man, I haven't even been drinking. Actually, I'm good to drive us back if you want. I love you, man, but you drive a Ford Fiesta, so uh, I'm I'm not getting caught leaving the Broskers in that. I'm sorry. It's just I can't do it. It's a lease, dude. I can swap it out at the end of the year. It's not a big deal. We'll do that first. Then we'll talk. All right. Here's our second to last award of the night. One of our favorites, the 2 a.m. drunk text of You Up Award. That goes to the movie that is most desperate to get some sort of recognition from other less prestigious award shows. To present these nominees, we have Christopher Walken. I know why I, Christopher Walken, was chosen to present this award as I've personally not sent, but received several you up, texts at 2 a.m. of women wanting to hop on the good foot and do the bad thing with me. I mean, Jesus Christ, listen to my voice. It makes women lactate at the drop of a hat. Here are the nominees for the movie that was so desperate for awards recognition. Goldfinch. The Irishman. Velvet Buzzsaw. Tom Hanks for that shitty Mr. Rogers movie. Harriet. The Two Popes. Because, like, why? And the winner of the 2 a.m. drunk text asking you up award is the Irishman. Brian, crowd seems to love it. Uh, any surprise from you here? I mean, this movie seemed like it was willing to suck any and everyone's penis just to get some sort of awards recognition this year. I think it just wants recognition, like, in general. Like how they didn't put out a trailer and they didn't show us anything. We didn't even know what the fuck it was about. So, yeah, no surprise here that they're just literally on their knees saying, line up, let me suck your D. Well, hey, uh, let's go backstage now to Geiger. Let's see if he got unstrapped from that machine and if Elizabeth Banks killed him or not. Matt, are you still there? Can you hear us? Yeah, sorry. I just had to put some eye drops in my eye. That was probably the worst piece of shit I've ever seen. Um, but that's because I'm a male, I guess, and I have a brain. Sexist pig, yeah. Um, a lot of reboot talk going around. A lot of reboot talk. The one that's getting passed around the most is that they're going to reboot Passion of the Christ with an all-female cast in 2020. And I guess this year, the Son of God is going to identify as a female, because in the summer of 2020, it's the estrogen of the Christ. It's just what I'm hearing, guys. I don't know. A lot of fire going on, but I would definitely see that movie in July. Maybe it might come out in December. I don't know. It's Warner Brothers, so it probably won't come out around Christmas. That would make too much sense. <laughs> I was saying the most unbelievable thing about that is that they could churn that bad girl out in time for the summer, but uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, who, want, who doesn't want to lay by the pool all day and then watch like some chick a just, geez, just get whipped for five hours? Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Back to you guys. Good work, Matt. I am impressed more and more every year that Geiger is actually able to get invited backstage for even our own award show. Yeah, and I think... Uh, Every year we also drift further from God's light. I don't disagree with you, but uh, that has nothing to do with anything. Uh, it's late in the awards night, man. I'm losing my edge. I need to go uh, get some body shots at the after party. You know what I'm saying? Well, for your sake, let's move it along to our last Brosker of the night, which, of course, is the Bros Becks Picture Award, which goes to our favorite movie of the year. Here to present it is Matthew. Matthew? No. Matthew's not here. He no, he's backstage. Yeah. yeah, he's still backstage. I'm pretty sure he's doing blow right now with Baby Yoda. Uh, instead, on stage, ready to go, we have Michael Caine and Mark Wahlberg. Hey there, Mark Wahlberg, okay? I gotta say I'm a little upset. Makes me present this last award because if you follow me on Instagram, you know I've been up since 2 a.m. working out while you were at home sleeping, all right? And I'm Sam Michael Caine who has no responsibilities because I'm goddamn royalty. 
I didn't know you had a British accent, Michael, okay? Granted, I've never seen any of your films, but I got no problem with you, all right? Say, how do you mother for me? I can barely understand a word you're saying, Mark. It literally sounds like David Ortiz's balls are in your mouth, your Boston accent so strong. Anyway, here are the nominees for Bro's Best Picture Award. Yesterday, Avengers Endgame, Marriage Story, Triple Frontier, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Elibolis. And the winner is... Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Banner Movie of the Year for the Bros. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Your thoughts? Any surprises here, or is this pretty much a chalk victory for it? Uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, I think this is one of the better, probably the best movie just in general on this list. Not the f- most fun movie, but definitely the the best. Yeah, do I still have a boner from Avengers Endgame? Absolutely. Was yesterday the most pleasant surprise of the year? 100%. But Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, start to finish, an awesome film. And actually, if you go back and listen to our movie preview show from last year, Geiger's most anticipated. Speaking of Geiger, you still alive back there, Matt? I mean, we just wrapped up the last award. How you doing? So I'm walking out of the last vendor table, and then I'm ready to hit the after party. The last vendor table, I didn't even know this. Ryan Johnson's here doing stand-up. He's doing stand-up comedy. I've been here for about five or ten minutes. It's really weird, though. He just will – he'll do these, like, awesome setup jokes, but he'll just never say a punchline. He'll just go to the next one. So he'll, like – he'll be like, yeah, there's two priests, a hooker, and a slutty chick, and they're all in a bar. And then and he'll say – then there's four astronauts. He'll just go to the next one. He'll just never do the fucking punchline. It's fucking weird as shit. It's almost like he can't finish a fucking story or character development or anything. It's weird. Anyway, back to you guys. I know. That sounds like a problem for the next stand-up comic, you know? <laughs> oh, my, that guy's fucked. Yeah, yeah. The next, the next stand-up comic has to deliver the punchline. That's right, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. That wraps it up. Another year of the Broskers is in the book. Always a pleasure to be here with you, Banner and Geiger. Uh, actually, to celebrate, I have some Zimas in the trunk of my car that we should crack open to celebrate. Dude, actually, I'm fucking one step ahead of you guys out here. I can confirm that we were fucking geniuses for dropping that as a sponsor because it tastes like fucking shit. Like ass? But like with a hint of strawberry or maybe like lime? Assberry. Wow. Zima, if you're listening, call us back. And that will do it for the first Daniel Broskers a third time. I'm the mayor, Jeff Hornacek, joined by the mad scientist, Brian Banner, and our backstage correspondent, our enforcer in the paint, Matt Geiger. Thank you guys for checking us out. We're just a bunch of bros drinking beer and watching movies. Follow us on Twitter, at bro squad Check out all of our movie reviews on letterbox.com. Just type in bro force. Squad as three separate words. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. If you type in Bro Four Squad as three words on all those, you'll find us and look at everything we're doing on our website, brofoursquad.com. Till then, we'll catch you this year at the movies, but we gotta get into this after party. Maybe Ashley Simpson is performing again. What a uh, treat that would be. Jeff, um you're not invited. You remember that song? You make me wanna la la. <laughs> Good to vote, guys. Maybe if we all vote, we'll stop talking about it.